So once we have talked about object-oriented programming, let's get started with the code. Now we know the most important thing in object-oriented programming is an object. And we also know if you want to create the object, you need a class. Now that class will act like a blueprint for whoever creates the object. Okay, so let's do that. But then before that, you know, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, there are so many things, so many files there. And even I'm getting confused which, I mean, which file consists what. Uh, so the ideally, you should always create packages and put those things there so that you can, you will know in which package you have which files. So at this point, uh, I will just minimize this calculator and we got all these extra files. I will just put all the files and I will just say cut, create a new package and I will say these are basics, put it there and minimize this. Now we have two different packages. We know this was supposed to be for calculator. We got only two files there and these are the basics, right? Now let's create a new package. In fact, I'm going to close this. Let's create a new package and I will say this is OOP because we are focusing on object-oriented programming now. So I'll just expand this and in this, in fact, we don't have any files there. I don't know why I expanded it. Uh, let's create a particular file here. And we'll name this file as, as usual, demo.py because that's what you're doing. We are seeing the demos. So what exactly we are going to do here? And as we discussed, we are going to create the object. I want to create the object of a computer and I'm going to name it as comp1. Now, first of all, it's just a reference to the object. So whatever object you're going to create, you can assign it to comp1, just like we did for the variables. Uh, example, let's say if I just comment this part and come back down and if I say a is equal to 18, now that's a value. This is a integer object and what you got here is a variable to assign it to or just reference it to. Now, before you, when I jump to comp1, I want to show you one more thing. What happens when I try to print the type of A? First of all, we are not printing it. So let me just print it somewhere and here itself on the console. And when I say type A and I'm going to print it, let's see what it returns. And before I do that, I have to first move to my folder, which is op. And now let's run demo.py run and you can see we got the output and it says class int. This is something you have to remember. So this is of type class integer. Okay. Uh, this we know. I'm trying to get your attention for this class here. So everything which we did till now, they are objects. Whenever you create functions as well, they are called function objects. So this int is of type of, it's, a, it's an object of type class int. And all these objects are getting created with the help of class. Okay, so this is an object here and the type of this object is int. So we can expand this mode where I'm trying to access some methods. Now, since we have an object, of course, it will have methods, right? We have talked about that. So I can say a dot and you can see we got multiple methods here. We can take care of any method here. Let's go for bit length and doesn't matter what it does. What's important is if you see the implementation for this, this is bit length. That's a function or a method because it belongs to a class. So this is how you create a class. So you create a class, you name it, and of course you have to use this keyword class and then you have to use some name, give a colon, and inside this you can define your functions, which we call methods, and that's how you do it. So one of the methods which you are focusing now is bit length. So how do you define a method? You say def, then you mention the method name, and in bracket you pass self. We'll talk about this self in some time. Okay, let's go back here and see that. So I'm not going to use this. I just wanted to show you. So this is the object which I'm going to create. But if I uncomment it, it has no idea. How do, we, how do you create an object? If it is a type int, you can simply say 10. Now this comp1, if you say type of comp1, it will be integer, class int to be specific. But I don't want class int. I want a class computer. So how do we do it? So first of all, we don't have inbuilt class called computer. So we have to create one. So if you don't have any class inbuilt, you can create. So let me get a class and this is how you do it. We have seen that. Okay, so class, then you have to give a class name. I'm going to give a class name as computer itself. And then we have seen the, we have to give a colon. The same way we do it for the functions, right? We say def function name and round brackets and then give a colon. Same way we have to give a colon here. Now in this class, you can have your things. Now when I say your things, what do I mean by it? Every class will have two things. 
or it can have two things. One, it will have properties and second, it will have methods. Now, the properties are your variables and the methods are your behaviors, right? Okay, so at this point, I want to keep it empty. So I will simply say pass and then come back here. Now you got comp, comp one. I want to create an object of a computer and assign it to comp one. How do we do it? So you simply say computer, but then if you simply say computer, let's see what happens. I'm going to say type. Okay. I'm going to say print type and I will say comp one here and let's see what is the output. So I'm just curious. I will just clear the screen first run. And for the second one, for this int, it says class int. But for this, it says class type. No, this is not class type. It should be class computer. So what is happening is what you are doing here with the comp one, you are assigning a class itself. You're not creating an object. This is not how you create the object. You're just assigning a class. The same way we have done for the functions, you know, we can define a function and we can assign that function to some something else. Example, let's say if I say function ABC, that's my function and you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying pass here and then you can create another variable which is XYZ and then you can assign ABC here. Now you're not calling this function, right? You're just assigning this function to some other function. So even XYZ becomes a function, same way comp1 becomes a class. We don't want to do that. We want to create an object. To do that, we have to use round brackets here. Again, what are these round brackets? Just to give you a hint, basically this is a constructor. It creates an object for you. What is constructor? We'll talk about that later. At this point, this creates an object. That's important. Now you will say, I don't trust you. No problem. Don't trust me. Trust the code. Look here. Now look at what it says. It says class of type computer. So it's in the module called main and you got computer. Perfect. So now if you can create the object and I'm also trying to print the type of it. So we know it's, a, it's an object, but what values you can have in the object and what else you can do with the object. Let's do simple stuff first. Let's define a method. We have talked about it, right? You can create a method which acts like a behavior. Now, when you say a computer, maybe you want to print the configuration of a computer. That's what normally we do, right? So when you buy, want to buy a computer, the most important thing for the computer is the configuration, not the color not the brand. So it should be, let's say i5, 16 GB RAM, or maybe i7, 16 GB RAM, one terabyte hard drive. Those are the configuration I'm looking for, not a fancy blue color laptop. I mean, I do have it, <laughs> but that's not what I wanted. I just wanted a configuration and then whatever laptop works. So here I will say def and I will say config. That's how you create a method. And then you will say, Hey, that's function. Yes, that's function. When you create a function inside your class, that becomes a method. Okay. So this is your method. Treat it with respect. So when you say def config and here I can just print it. So I can print, let's say the configuration, which is I seven, uh, I will say 16 GB RAM. I will say GB capital and then one terabyte of hard drive. Now this is how you create a method. Okay. Now a method will take one more thing. I don't know why my ID is not suggesting it, but it should. You have to pass self. Now, what is this self? You will understand that in some time, but we have to do that. And it's not self. You can use any other variable name, your wish, but then self is globally accepted. Okay. So everyone, when, when, when you show your code to a, another Python programmer, they will know this is your self. Okay. So they will know, know it. Okay. So now question arise, I got everything ready. I will just put all these things at the bottom because that's not our main concern now. In fact, if you want, you can delete this. That's not the concern we had. We're just going to focus on this part now. So once you have the object, once you got the method, the question is, how will you call this method? First thing first, for time being, I will remove self. Okay, let's go with the flow. I got the class. I got the method. I will just come back here and I say, I want to call this method called config. Your ID will not be happy with it. ID will say config is not defined. What you're doing? How can you call a method which is not there or function which is not there? You will say, hey, the function is there. Can't you say it? Actually, Python cannot say it is because it's inside a class. So you can solve with this problem by saying, okay, go to computer. You will find config. There's no problem now. Uh, let's try running it. And you got it. Our job is done. We can stop the video. But if you observe the video, we still have a few more minutes. That means the video is not done. Okay. What is going wrong here? Nothing is wrong. We, we got a class. We are getting a method. We are calling the method. Everything works. But this is not how you create a method. You always pass 
self here. Again, we have not talked about why self, but we'll talk in some time. So we pass self and then you try to call it. Now it's not working. And then you're saying, or in your mind you're saying, it was working before. Why you are spoiling the fun by adding a self there? See, the thing is, in the object-oriented programming, everything is an object, right? So when you create this comp one, that's an object. Don't you think that object need to be referred here? Now you will say, why? Why we need to refer an object here? It's because when you say computer config and when you're calling it, don't you think a computer can have multiple, multiple objects, not just one? So example, in this particular table, which I have two tables here, one laptop can be here. One laptop can be there, one for recording this video, one for practicing there. So we got two laptops, right? And if I try to damage one laptop, okay, I don't want to do it. Why are you even talking about laptop? I don't want to damage my laptop. This is cheaper. Okay, so let's say we got this remote, which using which you can control these slides, if you can see, I don't know. Yeah, so you can control this slide. So it has a behavior, it has a property. So it is white in color. It has few buttons there. It has a behavior. You can control the lights, right? Now in this particular studio, you can see we got, actually there are three lights. One is not working, but there are three lights and I got three remotes. I'm using only one because it, I can control all the lights with this remote, but there are three remotes. So we got three objects. If I break this by any case, maybe I'm sitting, maybe I kept it on a chair. I, I sat on it by mistake. And if I break it, it is only damaging one particular remote, not everything else, right? To give another example, all the humans are objects. I mean, not a good idea, but then let's say if I have three people standing in front of me, let's say we got Kiran, Harsh, and Sushil, and then they are humans, right? So I can say, human walk. The question is, which human will walk, right? So they are confused. So I have to be very specific. Human walk, in bracket, I can pass Harsh. Or I can say human walk in bracket, I can pass Sushil, right? Same way, when you say I got one object, you can have multiple objects. Imagine we have multiple objects. And how do we do it? It's very simple. You say com2 equal to computer. So we got two objects, right? Now, when you say computer or config, which object you're talking about? Because two laptops can have different configuration. So in this bracket, you can pass com1. So you are specifically mentioning, hey, config, I'm calling you. And I, I know you are in computer. And I want you to work with the comp1 object, the first object. So they can have multiple objects. This is the first object which I'm passing. And now this comp1 goes to self and that represents the current object. So example, if I refer to three objects here, and let's say two remotes are there on my table, one is in my hand, and I'm talking like this, this remote or self remote. Or you can also use this if you want. If you're confused, confused with this self, I can say this. And in Java language, we prefer using this. Uh, but in Python, we say self. And there's no compulsion that you have to use self. Even if you try with this, there's no problem. Your Python still works. But then we normally use self so that other developers will be happy with it. Or Python developers will be happy with it. Okay, so that's why we use self. Now you can do the same thing by saying computer.config and you can pass com2 here. So let me run this. And you can see we got two configurations. They are same because we are printing the same data, but we can print different data for different objects. So this is how you pass it. Okay, so I hope it makes sense now. So whenever you want to call a method, you basically have to use a class name because it belongs to that class. And then you have to pass the object. This is one way of doing it. The another way of doing it is very simple. You use the object name which is comp1, and then you say config. And you have to pass, the, you have to mention the round brackets. Now, will this work? Now, in your mind, it may not work is because in the config, we are not passing anything because we are accepting an argument, right? We have to pass it. But if you try this, it works. How? We need to pass it, right? So the thing is, when you mention the object name and when you say object.config, this object becomes a parameter here and it is passing here. So behind the scene, even if you write this behind the scene, this is getting called, okay? So you don't have to mention computer is because you are mentioning the type of that computer, which is comp1 or the object of the computer, which is comp1. And then this comp1 will go as a parameter. So I can say human walk in bracket, I can pass Kiran or I can say Kiran walk, which is simpler, this one, right? But behind the scene, it is still human walk Kiran. So that's how this thing works. That's how we create object. That's how we create a class. And we'll do more with this, like passing different data. But we'll do that in the next part. <music>